The morning of September 11th, I was at a doctor's office on University Place in 12th Street, and the window of that doctor's office overlooks the uh, World Trade Center at that time. And I was waiting for my appointment with the doctor, and I was looking out the window, and I actually saw the first plane hit. And I had my car with me in that area, and I figured that with a the flames were flying and, and with, a, with a situation like that, that I needed to go to where I normally would go in a large incident, which is to the uh, Office of Emergency Management uh, Emergency Operations Center. And at that time, it was housed at Seven World Trade Center. So I had left the doctor's office immediately. I got into my car and uh, drove down to that area. And luckily, I wasn't allowed to take my car into the immediate area. I ended up parking it with some other emergency vehicles on Broadway, and I walked into the zone uh, expecting to go to Seven World Trade Center, to the command center, where, where I would normally have a seat on behalf of Red Cross. And as it turned out, the uh, uh, Seven World Trade Center was being evacuated, and uh, so I was standing on a corner with a whole bunch of people uh, from all agencies. Finally, I was uh, standing with the command group on Church, on Church Street, and um, at that time, Chief Ali, Bill Ali from the, the NYPD, had approached me with uh, Chief Esposito and Chief Dunn, so the three of them were together. And Ali came up to me and he said, um, can you set up a temporary, uh, temporary morgue? At that moment, they thought we needed a temporary morgue. And then I started to walk away from the group, to go up Church Street to one of the churches, which is usually a very uh, accommodating place to set up a temporary morgue. Um, and uh, as I walked away from the group, the South Tower came down. And we heard this incredible sound. And uh, luckily, I had been asked to set up this temporary morgue or else we would not be having this conversation because most of the people I had been standing with got killed. So I got stuck in a debris field and uh, was basically trapped or just restricted for about four hours. Surreal, it was uh, dark. It was uh, uh, these particles suspended in air all over. Uh, it's what you imagine from a disaster movie kind of setting, uh, except this was real. Due to some really good work on the part of some uh, police that were in that group, uh, found a passageway to get out on the other side of the building. So when I got out, uh, we were all covered in ash and we couldn't see anything and it was tough breathing or whatever. We basically, I knew I wanted to get out of the area and get to my car. Um, so I never looked behind me up until the time and from there I ended up at what was the temporary uh, command center at uh, the police academy on 21st Street. And I walked into the uh, police academy and they had these two gigantic screens, monitors up uh, with this sight of the towers coming down, but just on a loop, and it just kept coming down. And I'm standing there covered in ash, and one of the commanders comes over to me and said, you didn't know, did you? And I said, no, I didn't know. And it was the first moment that I learned that the towers, act, the entire towers came down. Because uh, up until that moment, I, I believed, as others believed who were with me, that it was the top section that came down. Um, I ended up working at the, um, Police Academy Command Center until about two in the morning the next morning, and that was that was an amazing scene because we had one phone line, and we had to bring in um, the uh, uh, ham operators uh, to put up an antenna, and so we had connectivity with uh, other uh, command centers in other parts of New York City, but we were literally communicating by uh, one phone line that was working and uh, the ham radio operator. I was coordinating from where I was with the ARC GNY at, uh, on, on Amsterdam Avenue, and they were really trying to monitor and handle the requests in there because we didn't have the connectivity, we couldn't do it. Uh, and the end result of all of it was that, if you think back to that day, it was just the World Trade Center area. That was ground zero. 
the rest of the city was fine. But the rest of the city was paralyzed. And partially paralyzed because all of the exits and entries to the city had been shut down. So uh, the coordination of, uh, of the process was from the police academy where I was to the command center at, uh, at Red Cross and just coordinating all of those efforts. Um, and it was about 2 o'clock in the morning when I uh, finally got relieved. There was nobody on the street except police cars at that point. Uh, at that time, I was living on uh, 40th Street and 2nd Avenue and uh, finally got in the door. It was, I guess it was close to 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I remember getting into the door and going into, at that time, my son, my youngest son, was uh, about two and a half. And I remember going into his room and just sitting next to his bed 